Hey guys, man. Welcome. Welcome. We're uh, we're going to do a reaction video. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. This is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, thank you. Thank you both so much for, for doing this. Uh, we're going to be uh, taking a look at uh, really, you know, the city of Nijmegen and, and checking it out. Now, for most of this video, you two, uh, for most of this ride, you two were up front just carrying on a wonderful conversation. I was hanging out in the back most of the time. Uh, occasionally I'll, I would scooch up to the front, but the wind was so strong that day, we got zero audio, or <laughs> very, very little audio. So I'm going to just kind of shut up a little bit and and let you all talk a little bit about this experience. And Yos, what are we looking at right now in terms of uh, where we're at in the city? Well, actually, we are uh, looking at the, at Nijmegen, the inner city of Nijmegen. And as you see, all the all this, the the streets are uh, uh, red asphalt, so they are uh, cycling streets where c cars can go, but they are guests. They are one one way streets, and uh, for cars they are one way streets, but for bikes they are uh, bi directional. And well, that makes it uh, quite comfortable to choose for the bike in in the city of Nijmegen, uh, because most distances are uh, easier, closer. Uh, by bike than uh, than by car. Yeah, yeah. And and Jos, you've been on the podcast before, but why don't you yeah, take a, yeah. just a moment to introduce yourself real quick? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, I just started talking. But uh, <laughs> my name is Jos Leismans, and I'm uh, uh, well, actually, the director of the International Cargo Bike Festival. I um, I grew up in the south of the Netherlands, which is the more or less the only. Part of the Netherlands where there is where it's a little uh, hilly, except for Nijmegen and the surroundings. But I, I, I grew up in the south in Falkenberg, near Maastricht, also very near the Belgian border and, and the German border. And uh, I've actually always cycled all my life for for practical reasons. When I went to school, when I went to, school, to high school, I went uh, I, I, I I cycled the 13 kilometers one way and back in. Uh, but I just did it because that was the easiest way to get around and not with any, you know, thinking about it. But, um, but later I, uh, I became uh, more passionate about showing people how, how nice and easy and how much fun it is to, to ride your bike instead of, uh, of traveling by car and, you know, getting annoyed by traffic jams and things like that. Actually, that's yeah. and that's that exactly think. what we end up doing is we start exploring exactly. Nijmegen and you show us around and uh, I see that you're rocking uh, the the active towns old school hat yeah. there. Thank you so much for doing that. <laughs> that's actually a running hat, by the way, and I do have okay. more but of it, those it hats. Works for cycling as well. And it works for cycling as well. And there's actually a little uh, retro reflection on there too. So oh, really? uh, if lights see that, that they, they you, you, you will pop out a little bit. Uh, folks, I do have extra hats of those. So if you want one, just just send me a message. I'll, I'll make sure you get that. Uh, Jordan Clark, welcome back once again. You are you a are regular guest here on the Active Towns channel. Uh, welcome for, this, uh, for the return of this uh, reaction video. Thanks, John. I've been racking up the, the visits and it's good to be back, yeah. especially to be here with Yos. What an yes. honor. Thank you. And, <laughs> and yeah, this is, you, it, yeah, and this is the second to the last day of your Netherlands trip. So this was November 7th, uh, 2022. And I'm going to press play again and let the two of you just kind of riff on this. Uh, Jordan, why don't you start off by just talking about these uh, first few minutes of our afternoon ride uh, there in Nijmegen. I think one of the things that stands out is just how smooth this is. Like this, how much attention to detail on the surface is. You know, even before you get to the how they handle traffic and everything and the mixing of, of user types. Um saw that raised crosswalk there that we could do a lot more of in North America. Um, but I mean, just everywhere we went, it, especially in the center, it was so smooth. All, all the surfaces were so well, well engineered and well maintained for cycling. And I think mm -hmm. one thing is like, it's, it's cost a lot less and is easier to do that when you have so much less physical infrastructure to maintain. Right. I'm going to press mm. pause here, uh, Yos, uh, just to have you uh, talk a little bit about uh, where we are at now in the city. Well, this is uh, we we are going through the the central station, train station, 
And actually, under this, um, they, they rebuilt this uh, street because there is a big uh, car parking beneath of uh, two, two floors of uh, car parking. I think uh, a little bit more than 600 uh, places for, for cars. And of course, that's for parking to visit the city, but also for people that, uh, although a lot of people go to the, to, the, to the train station by bike, there are also people that go by, by car. And uh, so that's um, convenient uh, that way as well. But you don't see I do, the car. I notice there's a, uh, this is a transit hub too. We got some buses here as well. Yeah, exactly. That's a, that's a really, uh, that's a central place for buses as well. That, that, that's quite usual in the Netherlands when you have train station, you have bike parking and you have buses as well, taxi. So that's, uh, that, yeah, that's a regular hub. Yeah. So the... Uh, Utrecht and now Amsterdam are famous for some very large indoor bike parking garages. Uh, is is there also a uh, bike parking for uh, the central uh, train station here in Nijmegen? Yeah, sure. We we passed by that, but we didn't go in. But uh, mm-hmm. it's called the Transferium, and there is I think there's place for four and a half thousand uh, uh, bicycles. Mm-hmm. And there is also a uh, um, an older one uh, underneath the the, the station's uh, uh, plaza in front of mm-hmm. the of the train station, which has I think two and a half something like that. And then there is an open air two layers of uh, well actually four because every layer has a double you know like like you know from the from the Dutch bike parking they have. There are always two uh, two layers, um, but then there is um, which which also has some three thousand uh, places. So altogether, there are quite some um, bike uh, bike parking places uh, around the station, and actually, they are um, within um, very short time that this this whole area will be uh, uh, re- redeveloped. There will be yeah. a new entrance for the for the station. There will be a entrance from from the other side from the west side as well and then again the the, the bike parking will be uh, uh, re, 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 reconstructed as well so oh, okay uh, Jordan what, what what were you thinking when you you know kind of I, I know you two were like carrying on a conversation I caught little bits of the fact that uh, you know Yos had p- pointed out uh, the the car park underneath Um but this camera is going to swing over to the right, and I, I thought that was pretty amazing. But what were you, what were you sort of absorbing, or if you can remember, uh, you know, back to that time, or what are your reflections of seeing this again uh, of this particular area of the city? Yeah, well, if I remember what Yost was saying, I would have, uh, I'd have to, to kill you if I told you. <laughs> um, so I might have to keep that to myself. Yeah, so it's the, part of the top secret thing. We, we didn't share with the audience that Yos is a, is a se- top secret spy. Yeah, yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah, well, I think, uh, you know, um, one of the things that you kind of pointed out already is just like making sure that your central train and tr- train station transportation hub is well integrated um, with other forms of transportation um, so that it's like really an extension of your mobility you know, throughout the city and throughout the region. Um, Here, I think it's kind of interesting that you've got a pretty busy road going underneath. Um, We're starting to see more of these. I don't know if the, I don't know if that road was there first and then was capped over or not, but we're starting to see that a lot in the U.S. Um, I don't know, this part looked a little bit more North American to me than I think maybe a lot of our (laughs) Dutch, uh, you know, a lot of the typical Dutch scenes you might see. Um, I don't know what you think about that, Yos. Maybe it's the tall well, buildings know, and the wide right picture, of way. Yeah, it, uh, it, it looks like like a big big city, and it can be any city, even in, in North America, I think. But um, but I, I like what you say about this this integration of all kind of, of of uses, and we do that in transportation. And I also thought about um, the picture where you stopped before, uh, John. Um, the, the big building that we see there, it's, it's also a combination of it's, it's, the, it's a, a, a music uh, theater. So uh, there, is, uh, there are um, several uh, um, halls where they, where they have uh, performances of, 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 of artists. It's, it's um, a student uh, living building, you know, they're all, uh, in top there are the, the students living. 
and then underneath is this the bike parking that I was uh, talking about. So um, when you mentioned this, this this integral transportation, you know, making all the function work, that's um, um, that's also working for uh, for for the for the buildings. Yeah, and it's not just putting it in a central location, right? It's that like that those last details of being able to make a comfortable connection, getting off your bike, having it securely stored or being able to walk there or the bus, you know, that's only a few steps from getting on the train. Like we sometimes have a bad habit and I'll just pick on Dallas <laughs> because it's where I live. It's like we have a lot of people living in close proximity to a, a train station. And so the transit score is hot, you know, high for that area, but it's, a really dangerous and scary uh, road that you've got to cross with almost no infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So those little, you know, seemingly little details from zoomed out on a map, uh, like end up making so much of the difference. Yeah. It's so funny yeah. you mentioned that Jordan, because that's one of the uh, lasting memories I have of riding transit uh, in the Dallas area and riding Oof, my Brompton yeah. around the Dallas area is I would show up at a train station stop uh on the the line there and i'd look around and it's like there's a, a car parking garage yeah but there was no way for somebody living in the apartment complex right across the street to be able to easily access the train station it was just mind-boggling yeah and stupid. it's especially <laughs> painful when the, when it's like those near misses yeah. right it's like you're so close yeah. to so get, they get the score because of proximity but you can't mm -hmm. actually get there from there yeah mm -hmm. yeah i love yeah. it yeah, so probably. this marks the end of sort of our uh, the 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 downtown or old town, the core transitioning over to the center city. And then we get into just some amazing network of this. What on earth are we looking at here, Yos? <laughs> uh, this is the this is so-called Snell Binder. It's part of the the fast cycle route to uh, to Arnhem and um, it's um, well it's the it's leading to the bridge uh, the Snellbinder which was um, attached actually to the um, to, to the rail uh, to the railroad so the, the railroad bridge was already there since 1872 something like that and then the cycle path was uh, was attached to it in, uh, in in 2009, I think. Yeah, something like that, or even earlier. I'm not sure. Uh, 2004, it was in May 2004. It was um, uh, built um, there, and uh, yeah, it's 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 simply it's it, it's used a lot. I mean, it's it's really really good to uh, uh, for for people to cycle there. Yeah. And what I love about this is uh, we can, off to the left there, you can see the transit line is right there. So you can see that this is, we're sharing sort of the same, you know, area. And mm. at one point in time, I think we had trains going in two different directions, plus us on this elevated bridge. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Really, truly special. Now, Yos, you had mentioned, and I, I caught a little bit of this uh, while we were while we were riding. There's something special about the uh, the the side, the railing, correct? The fence here. Yeah, yeah, that that's right. There is uh, the railing. You know, when you when you yeah when when you pass by, it looks like they're just you know regular railing, but uh, yeah. the it's it's spelled wow, and that's the name of the river all along the bridge. So it's yeah. I, I I once for as a joke I did a quiz for how many times is wow put in there, but that it's it's really hundreds hundreds of times. Yeah, and uh, I, I I like that as a as a as a detail and and. I tried to make a picture of it with seeing the shadow, but you know when you yeah. pass there in the morning, at at the as the e, at the east side, the, yeah. the 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 writing is in in mirror script, but right. when the sun shines through, you get it uh, right on the on the cycle path, uh, saying, "Wow, well, I, I I like these these kinds of details that uh, you know that I even take uh, the effort to make something different than just regular." Uh, uh, railing so that's yeah uh, yeah, yeah that, that, that's funny that uh, they use that yeah mm. yeah i, like I also appreciated stuff. how they were not in this scene but how the the railing was kind of angled away from yeah, the yeah. pavement 
So it's a little bit more comfortable to get closer to the to the edge than it is if it's kind of straight up and down. Yeah, mm-hmm. let me see if we can get back to that spot. Do, 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 do. Yeah, so I see what you mean yeah, here, Jordan. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. it's it's got sort it of that angle. So. That so yeah, yeah. Oh, well, actually, that that's also what 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 we do with building as cycling tunnels. Then then the walls also are usually a little bit outside, which which create creates a lot of space actually also within a tunnel. So that's uh, that that's a nice detail too. Yeah. It is a nice detail, and it also contributes to the sense of safety, especially for women when, you know, you have that angle uh, on those walls in tunnels, because then it feels a lot less uh, constricted and a mm-hmm. lot less scary. It's It feels more open. It feels safer. Uh, there's a comfort level to that. So I'm glad you mentioned that, Yos. That is a, that is a design uh, factor yeah. that I think is, a, a, from an engineering perspective, that's very mm-hmm. important. The stairs that you saw there, when mm-hmm. when <laughs> they are, they also have a have a, a cycling feature. You could say they uh, they have a, a a lip for bringing the bikes up, and when you go yeah. down, there is a uh, brushes to 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 stop you a little bit going too fast. Yos, do you feel like they sized this big enough for the traffic it receives, or is there ever any times when it feels a little constricted? Um, I think in general it's it's quite quite good, but it can be very uh, very very busy, especially in the summer when uh, and and also because it's it's shared with uh, with mopeds and they go yeah. way too fast sometimes. So that that can be that can, can make feel you that it's too busy. And also in the summer when uh, we cross the, the river Wild and there actually they they rebuilt did a lot of reconstruction there as well so there are uh, um, um, uh, beaches beneath and so people that that want to go to the beach they put their bikes on the bridge and so there are a lot of bikes on the bridge as well and a lot of people going there and and then it gets uh, really busy and you saw in the beginning you saw this uh, yellow uh, sign that said please uh, limit your uh, speed when it's busy because you know in the summertime it can be that busy that well they simply ask mainly mopeds to to or or speed pedelecs or e-bikes to to really consider uh, that there are a lot of people around and uh, that you have to uh, to limit your speed to to get around uh, well and uh, but in general you know the, the the fun thing about cycling is still that you have that you have contact with the people so and you know it's it's different than than having a lot of car traffic trying to get to a narrow space and having uh, a cyclist. Uh, in, in, in general, you, you see the people, you, you, you can talk to them. Uh, and so it, um, it's, it's, it's not always that uh, an ideal picture, but you know, you, you get along much easier, I think. Yeah. And I did rewind just for a second here, Yost, to, to, to point out, yes, there is that feature uh, at these stairs that you, you had mentioned. Well, there's so. actually somebody going down now. And, yeah. and uh, yeah. uh, so you are a little bit stopped by the, the brushes to, that, that right. uh, you don't go down too fast because it's quite a, a, quite a steep, um, uh, uh, how do you say that in English? Uh, a steep descent. Yeah, it's a steep descent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And actually, you know, from, from a cyclist point of view, it's, it's still an obstacle. I mean, it's not, it's not an ideal uh, way of going down uh, the, um, the, the cycle path, but when it's there, then you can make, then you can have this feature to make it a little bit easier. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and I also wanted to rewind just a little bit here because, uh, very quickly, uh, we, uh, pass under what looks like a, a historic, uh, feature. What, what's this all about? Yeah, I mean that 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 I think that's the that's the old um, uh, well they re- restored it as well. It's it's not uh, all original, but uh, that's where the, the the old bridge started actually. So uh, um, so the, the the cycle path is, is is quite new. It was not there before, and they had actually it was a uh, somebody was living there, so they had to go through his living room. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then we no get to the modern uh, bridge here. Say. 
Well, it, it, still, you know, it, it, it's quite amazing. This is the, the, the whole bridge is like two kilometers of of of, of cycle path uh, attached to the bridge, and and they they did not have to build new pillars or anything. They just, you know, the the the, the, the railroad bridge was strong enough to have this uh, put against it, and that's. Uh, um, you know, wh when you really want to know everything about uh, this uh, this specific uh, bridge, you will have to watch the video of uh, Bicycle Dutch, uh, Mark Wagenbuur. He uh, he explains everything uh, much much better than I can, and it's really worth watching it and 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 you know getting all the details and and uh, the historical uh, 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 details about it as well. Yeah, the two-week the train for bike. Yeah, and you sent those links over to me, Yo. So I'll make sure that we include those links in the video description uh, below uh, to yeah, to yeah, that'll be good. That'll be good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, excellent. And again, this is a, a another good example. We just got passed by another uh, train, you know, rolling through here, and I I really love this in interface with the city connecting to some of the green space, uh, connecting to some of the farms that are still working in the area. I was just charmed by this whole area. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really uh, it's a very nice uh, area, and especially this this new area in the river that they that, that they rebuilt the the Spiegelwald, the Meerwald, the, the let's say a, kind of a bypass uh, of the of the river wall. It's it's a very nice uh, uh, region, and also. The town that we it's it's still Nijmegen, but the part that we are entering here now it's it's actually a it was a different village before because it was the other side of the, of the river. So you know you have the city and then you have something at the other side of the river, and now it's it's becoming one one big place. And while well, this looks very idyllic, but at the other side they are building really a lot of new houses and and, <laughs> and building. So uh, it's it's changing. It's changing very fast they are um, there is um, at the other side of the river they have planned 30,000 uh, 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 houses so that's that's a new town by itself actually I think I do scan over to that area where we can see that construction happening Jordan reflect a little bit here um, I wanted to pause on this simply because it, this is another great example of infrastructure, the cycle path infrastructure that is traveling great distances. As Yos just mentioned, this is over two kilometers uh, in, in length. Um, and, and yet, boom, we're able to scan to the right and just see, you know, working farmland. Reflect on this a little bit because you and I have had this discussion before about how uh, you know, infrastructure can serve multiple purposes. It can be recreation in nature, but it can also be serve, be utilitarian in nature, but also connect us to nature. And I got a, a, yeah. a little bit of that sense rolling past here. Yeah, one of the things I feel like stood out uh, from our trip is just how much more stark the urban and rural divide can be in um, in Dutch in Dutch towns. Um, than than in the U.S., for example, where it's a lot more of a kind of a suburban gradient, um, and I th I think that that gets to your point of being able to get out in a bit more green surroundings pretty quickly um, from from being in the center of a Dutch city, for example. Um, you know, obviously that's that's pretty maybe maybe specific in some ways to to Dutch history and Dutch geography, just being a lot more more con contained and, and agricultural in nature. But, um, you know, we, we aren't out outside of the city just yet, but uh, you still see pockets of that that kind of remind you that they pursue a bit more contained approach to their to their city growth. Um, but yeah, like I, I think it's so cool how that the, the, in the bicycle infrastructure can fulfill recreational purposes and transportation purposes at the same time. That's like the you know, that, that feels like the Holy grail, right? That the ability to make the, um, your, the, the transit time not be a disutility, but be something that can be enjoyable on its own too. Yeah. And then we get to the other side and boom, here we are at another rail station here and you can see some of the bike parking, uh, on, on the other side of, uh, of that, that structure, that bridge that we saw. Hmm. 
I wanted to add something to that rural uh, idea. What's very funny about the, the cycling bridge as well? It's it's used also to uh, for uh, uh, herds of sheep to bring them from one side of the river to the other one, and that's yeah. really funny. You know, then, then then you can end up on your bike with it, uh, in the middle of a herd of sheep, yeah. and the whole the whole cycle path is all you know full of shit of yeah. sheep, but but that's okay. It's uh, yeah yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's and and this is the area that you were just referencing, uh, Yos, if I remember correctly. I yeah, end up scanning to the left uh, right about the time, uh, not here, but around, and and take a look at the construction, the area that is being built, and this is where you were saying about thirty thousand yeah, new yeah. homes are are being uh, they're preparing for thirty thousand new residents. Yeah. That, that's right. Well, you know, there's we'll uh, we'll cycle through other, some new neighborhoods that are already built, but the whole uh, um, it's called the Hof van Holland, and uh, yeah, it, it's uh, this is a school here on the on the left that that I built a few years earlier, and uh, well, actually, we passed by this little bridge with the green railing, which which is called the little green one. And this name was uh, kind of invented by by the school kids. They they asked the kids, you know, what what should be the new name, and they uh, call it in Dutch it's Groentje. And um, it's uh, yeah, I think that's also a very very nice bridge. And it, uh, I think you did not really video that, but but you pass a a six lane road there, and uh, so that's uh, that's quite interesting. Uh, um, that they decided to, to build a bridge and not, you know, just cross the street like like we do here. Yeah. And I paused here just to, to, to emphasize that, yes, we just rolled past this school and, uh, you know, these you know four or five uh, kids are going to be you know, peeling off to the right as we're going to go straight through here. I'm just so encouraged by uh, every time we roll past a school and you see, you know, the throngs of kids coming and going uh, from the school by bike with when they're much, much younger and they may have their uh, parents there with them or an adult with them, mm -hmm. as we'll see in just a moment in the new uh, uh, neighborhood that we roll through. But uh, yeah, I just I love this. So I can't get enough. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine that. I mean, it, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't catch my attention because yeah, it's. Yeah. For us, it's very usual, but it's, uh, I, I uh, yeah, this, this school, when, when it's, it's hardly, you know, you, when you go by car, you can hardly reach it. It's not really much easier to do by foot or by, by bike. So yeah. that's, uh, that's how so I paused on this real quickly, uh, uh Jordan, uh, because this is a brand new, uh, roundabout sort of a uh, bit of infrastructure. And you can tell that we're getting into this new neighborhood area because we can see that this is all very, very new. And it looks like it's, uh, you know, prepared to, you know, be expanded and, and have uh, new lanes, you know, put in it in the, in the future. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, Yos and, and or Jordan, uh, any, any comments on, on this particular structure? It's it's a new roundabout. That's yeah. <laughs> that's right. Uh, well, this particular one, there, there will yeah, be. Yeah, you stop showing off there, Yos. <laughs> <laughs> it's extraordinary uh, to us, but you're like, yeah, yeah, it's just a new roundabout, no big deal. <laughs> uh, no, no, I do understand. It's uh, well, yeah. you know, this 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 road where we are cycling now. It's uh, it, it was a more like a provincial road, quite quite busy as well, but connecting the one. There were no houses before, so that that yeah. was a really different road, and uh, actually there was not even a crossroads because there were no houses before. So it's it's all very new. Yeah, yeah. And and speaking of new, so now we're getting into some of the uh, this this community here, uh, Jordan. As as you've had a chance to to see this video a little bit, any thoughts you know come to mind um, from this experience? Well, I think this looks uh, very different than a lot of the brand new suburban developments that we tend to see. <laughs> Here, I think uh, having a bicycle priority street that still allows cars, you know, shows shows us an example of how we can have, 
you know, accessibility for all users, um, including, including drivers, um, while having a pretty compact and pleasant development that makes, um, you know, for less stormwater runoff from impervious surfaces that you have to end up managing. And it looks like they do a good job here with the, with the runoff into the, the kind of depressed green spaces off on the right. Um, I don't know. I think it's just an, a, a bit more efficient use of space so you can conserve more of the undeveloped land that, that still does remain. Um, and, and again, I just, the attention to detail on the surfaces is one of the things that always strikes me. You know, it's just like, it's a, a pleasure to use no matter what um, user type you are, I feel like. And, and maybe part of that is you have less to actually, you know, you have less paving and less materials to use. So you can use a bit, uh, you know, a bit nicer materials. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yos, you know, so why don't you uh, address this concept here? We started this conversation off in the old town, the, the historic core area, looking at the bicycle priority streets and the, the red asphalt in that environment and the red bricks, uh, the pavers that, that were in that environment. Now we see a newer environment here. And we see the, the, again, bicycle priority street with the red asphalt. We see that cars are allowed in this space, but mm-hmm. very, very soon we see the filtered permeability we're able to continue going straight but the cars cannot talk a little yeah. bit of about that from you know your perspective there in nijmegen you've been advocating for safer streets and more uh you know safer environments for people cycling and being able to to do more utilitarian trips uh you know for decades now how encouraging is it, you know, from your perspective as a resident of the city to see, you know, this is, is coming to fruition? Yeah, I mean, this, this is also for me, this looks really great that it's built like this from the beginning with, with the idea in, in mind that, uh, that you provide accessibility for cars, but, but not as the most dominant uh, uh, way of transport. And then you have these. Uh, we just passed. This is only for uh, for uh, bicycles and, and and pedestrians. But it's 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 also important to point out that you need these uh, bollards in the middle. I mean, it's um, actually for a, for from from a cyclist point of view, you would not like this uh, this uh, this bollard in the middle because it's uh, you uh, people can ride against it as well. But um, it's also important to see that it's uh, that it's necessary to put it there because otherwise cars would probably use the, the cycle path there as well, which I can imagine because it doesn't differ that much from where they are allowed to to ride. Um, but still, that's uh, that's something uh, that uh, and and because you can make these passes through a cycle path only. That's an encouragement to, to, to take the bike, to, to go faster by bike than by, by car. But what I like a lot about this, uh, this neighborhood is also, I mean, you had some parking places for cars, but the cars that belong to the houses, more or less, they are, they are parked, uh, let's say, more behind the houses. It's not that, the, you know, the cars do not dominate the view of, of, uh, of the whole neighborhood. And that's, uh, I think they did that really, really nicely. Yeah. I, I rewound that because I wanted to see that clip again. Um, we're talking a lot about um, making the streets and the uh, pathways and the areas around schools much safer. And so I wanted to, to, to like really emphasize that this is rolling right past a primary school, a school for little ones. Mm-hmm. And you can t- kind of see that, yes, there are cars, but the drivers are going quite slowly uh, but you know, it, it's, I, I don't know. I mean, it's something that I think many cities around the globe are dealing with is how do you mix, you know, everybody in there. And, and I felt like everyone was just so incredibly comfortable in this environment. Maybe they'd be even more comfortable if the cars weren't there at all, but it, it's a little bit of a balance and a trade-off. Isn't that about that? Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when the, when the balance is right and everybody acts, the way you should act. And I think the environment also uh, kind of, you know, it, 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 
I don't think any car driver would feel comfortable uh, going uh, faster than 30 kilometers on a road like that. So, you know, it kind of makes you go the way you are, uh, you're supposed to, to behave on, on, on a street like that. So, yeah, that, that works out quite well, pretty well. And I would say that pretty much everyone that we just interacted with there was traveling less than 15 kilometers per hour. They were moving quite slowly, and I think that that oh, is yeah. quite appropriate for that environment is to go yeah. really but it was, slowly. It was quite busy busy yeah. with, with uh, children, and, and, and yeah. so that's um, – and and most cars that are riding there, they are taking kids to school as well, or they are neighbors, or you know that that also makes that they that they, that they behave well. Yeah. So Jordan, you're in the business of of helping uh, cities build pathways and facilities and and places like this. Uh, you, <laughs> some observations of what we're looking at right here on screen in terms of having this two way cycle path. You know, you do see some car parking and you have a, a reasonably sized road, but you're right there at the school. You know, talk, talk a little bit about this riff on this a little bit, because I think this is something that your clients, you know, cities and municipalities that you're working with could uh, be able to see how empowering having a pathway, a trail, a cycle path mm -hmm. could be for their community. Yeah, I think maybe something that might stand out. To someone watching from over here is like, where's all the where, parking? Where are all the the parents going to queue up in their cars to for drop off and pick up? This is going to be a nightmare. Uh, which to me, you know, I live about a block and a half from a an elementary school, and I think the nightmare is how many how many cars there are sitting idling for an hour and a half, or or so maybe that's you know maybe an hour um, in the morning and the evening. Um, and you know, how, how necessary it is that there are crossing guards at multiple streets, um, because people are in a rush to get there and to get to work. And, uh, you know, I think that's almost the obsession is like, we got to find a place for all the cars to queue up. Whereas here, it's almost like the cars were sort of the anomaly here because of, of the safe system approach that allowed for kids to get there safely um, on bike and for parents not to be afraid to let that happen. You know, to me, it's almost like the more macro picture of how this fits into the broader, the broader approach that makes cycling, uh, that much more of an option for, for, for even small children. Yeah. And we're rolling past another boring roundabout here. Hold on. <laughs> Those land in the neighborhood there again. Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, we're right on the, the, the urban rural fringe at, at this point. We've got some working farms here. Uh, we're on this, you know, very, very comfortable cycle path and, and heading on down. Um, Yos, what are we looking at now? Because we're, we're heading towards a, a, a another section of uh, the city and we're going to go past this bridge here. Uh, but there's some new developments going on here, and there's a very special feature that we're seeing right here. Yeah, this is uh, this is called the Ova Tonde. It's uh, well, it's it's kind of a roundabout, but then uh, oval roundabout, let's say. And it's uh, it's over the um, the the highway from uh, from Nijmegen to to Arnhem. And it's uh, yeah, it's 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 new development. There are uh, there's a three-dimensional um, uh, cinema this, this red building it's uh, so that that'll attracts a lot of people on on the left they are building uh, a really big uh, a new store for uh, um, for handyman and, and 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 gardening and things like that so also very uh, uh, attracting a lot of um, car traffic probably and here is Another new roundabout, and uh, that will connect a new um, uh, village road um, from um, to prevent cars going through the village. So they go around the village, and then they will end up here at uh, at this uh, at this uh, area. And there has been quite a lot of discussion on. Um, well, that, that's, that, that's going to be a rural, rural road, so the, 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 the speed can be 80 kilometers per hour, 
but at the same time, it's it's crossing the the Rhine Wildpath, the the, the cycle, uh, the fast cycle route. So, um, as 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 cycling advocates, we, we see some some difficulties there. Uh, of course, they will, the cars will be slowed down to to fifty or maybe to thirty. But when you come from a, a eighty kilometer road and uh, cyclists will be passing, it's uh, I'm I'm quite uh, quite convinced that there will be uh, quite some some accidents there, um, or people will not use the cycle path anymore as much as as they do now, or that they will was were supposed to be because it is it's adding a a, a really dangerous spot actually within a very safe environment that it, that it is now, and uh, so we will see how that will uh, will develop, but um, it would would have been much better if they would have made a tunnel or a a bridge to uh from that road that is to come but it's um <clears throat> yeah that that's what we have to, to to see how it works out and maybe they will even change because the the central government is is made is, is providing much more money lately for uh, for cycling infrastructure as well and actually we proposed to to use it for a uh, for a tunnel or a bridge on this particular spot but uh we are not the ones that decide on uh, on these uh, <laughs> these uh, things so uh, let's see what happens with it yeah well it brings it brings up a good point Jos, that uh you know even in the netherlands you still have to have advocates and advocacy organizations yeah, pushing yeah. hard to keep the, the government to, to build things that don't prioritize the movement of motor vehicles over people. So mm-hmm. I, I, I'm glad that you mentioned that, you know, that, you know, hey, not all is well and you perfect. Know, no, and, I know, you know, a lot of people, yeah. you know, like you guys, they, they are surprised that, that we are still yeah. fighting for things because yeah. it looks it looks like paradise, but it yeah. it still has to be all about. Or so that's the lesson to everybody tuning in watching this is that, hey, yeah, I mean, the fight never ends. You always are, are trying to, to push a, uh, against a motordom uh, because, you know, left to its own devices, it will take over. It's it's like an amoeba. Uh, Jordan, do you remember uh, what Yost was telling us about the this particular cycle path and the two different colors? Yeah, but again, <laughs> I can't tell you because yeah. you know, yeah, it's that secret. Uh, you know, so, uh, go ahead and fi- uh, fill us in. Uh, the 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 feature of this is that uh, there there's two two different colors. Walk us through what people experience yeah, when we're we, on this path. Oh, the lights. Yeah, we we were we yeah. were talking about the lights and the, the special design of the of the of the, the lamp posts, um, which resemble a a chain, a bicycle chain, and it goes well. Actually. They were designed for this particular cycle path, the Rhein Wild Path. Uh, but actually, they are using them in, in at more um, uh, uh, fast cycle routes now. And the fun thing is that one side uh, you see you see the green light, and uh, in this particular case, it's when you go from Arnhem in the north to Nijmegen you see the you see the whole the green lights but when you go from Nijmegen to Arnhem it's it's purple and um, you know that's also a funny a fun feature that doesn't you know you don't need that but it it, it gives an extra dimension to to make it kind of almost an artwork and also while the idea is a little bit you know when you know this then when you are on the track, you know, okay, now I'm going in the right direction when you want to go to Arnhem or when you want to go to Nijmegen. And uh, I, I like these kind of details that, uh, that they, they, you know, that that's thought about. And actually it's, it's, I mean, it costs extra money, but then when they decided to, to make this in, in more cycle path, it's not even, you know, it doesn't make a difference. There are thousands, thousands of, of lamp posts now in, that are designed this way, so uh, uh, it's, it's it's almost mass production, and uh, that makes it more cheaper than uh, than in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. And I make the joke that this is the uh, the Nijmegen ski hill here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I don't know. This was your first time in Nijmegen, right? Yes, first time in Nijmegen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
but there are some 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 challenging hills really yes. so next yeah. time we're, we're joking left. about that it, yeah. it is the hillier <laughs> part of of the country yeah. yes <laughs> So what we're rolling up to uh, now is uh, very quickly, we're going to be treated to something very special. It's Velorama. Uh, walk us through the details of, of this, uh, this particular facility, Yos. Well, actually, it's the, uh, the National uh, Cycling Museum, and they really have some, some really amazing pieces of, of old bikes. Well, you know, you can see it, the, the first Dresden walking bikes and and what i think is really amazing about this museum is that you can see that a lot of things that you know technical things or how to how to build a bike or how to ride a bike and that that they were already like 100 years ago 150 years ago 200 years ago they they already existed and then at that time some some techniques didn't work out at that time but you see coming them back uh, now and and uh, it's really really nice to see that it uh, uh, that it already existed then for instance i'm 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 a fan of of a chef drive and chef drive is already you know more than 100 years old and and you can see there some of the first uh, chef drive bicycles lots of cargo and bikes we, too yeah there, there were quite some cargo bikes that's that's right yeah and also, you know, see the details that they, you know, that the bike is really a, a kind of a, a horse, <laughs> and it's still uh, you can still see that in the first bikes that they they build that they have the resembles resemble really of a horse. That's, well, that was uh, one of the sayings: it, it, the bicycle was the horse replacement. Yeah, exactly. So, but but they were still thinking. You see that in the, in the first cars as well. They are chariots, like you know, like without a horse, but still the same, uh, build. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, a side by side, beautiful. you know, that's pretty, pretty yeah. special. And the, the suspension. Yep. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, suspension, yeah. 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 And not having, uh, air filled tubes, but then, uh, and a railroad bicycle. That was cool. <laughs> yeah. I had something like that. Yeah. Jordan, what were you thinking when, while you were going through here? I mean, this is incredible, right? Like the imagine the degree of imagination that was employed over the decades leading up to sort of us settling on a okay, this is the bike. Now we we figured it out. Like it's just it's so fun, and there's so many moments of whimsy that you could see in the development. Like some were clearly to show off, and and some were you know trying to be clever, and that's what a delight. <laughs> yeah. And some, and, you know, and, and as you mentioned earlier, you know, Jordan, uh, some of them were, you know, very much cargo related and you yeah. can see, you know, some yeah. things here and, you know, Yos, you're, you're posing in front of uh, one of the more substantial cargo bikes yeah. that we saw. So, you know, from the very beginning, it, yes, there was some whimsy, there was some recreation, but there was also uh, a, a thought that, Hey, we can use these for, for utilitarian purposes. Yeah. Some more commercially, maybe, um, focused ones like we actually still see today in a lot of cities, um, people, people, um, you know, bringing ice cream around or, or different, different carts like that. That's still, you can see the, the early versions of them here. Yeah. And from the other hand, you know, at a certain point you see that, that the, the design hasn't changed that much. I mean, it, it's already. Well, once it was, uh, yeah, that, that's how it's, uh, it's just a very good uh, design. And when you keep it like that, it's, it's simple and, and uh, it does what you can expect from it. Yeah. yeah. And, and I'm glad you mentioned that too, Yos, because that's, uh, we just saw a, a you know, a, a classic step through frame Oma feats there. And, you know, that's one of the things that we were kind of keeping an, our eyes open for while we were there is the fact that the Dutch, the typical Dutch bike is kind of has been unchanged since those original models that you showed up from uh, Great Britain, a, a specific a model that, you know, was there. And yeah, to your point, you know, the, the current quote unquote new old 
style Dutch bikes are very similar to those original ones all those many years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And we got some Hezellas, uh, you know, being shown, uh, you know, uh, uh, racing and here's a folding bike just for uh, Jordan and I. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, this is just super, super fun to, to do this. So, Yos, I was so uh, appreciative that you thought to, to, to take us to this. It was it was a great deal of fun. Um, the proprietor who's, you know, behind this collection, we had a chance to sit down and have coffee with him afterwards. Mm-hmm. Uh, really, it was quite special. Yeah, he's a, he's a he's a nice guy, uh, and, and well, actually, this is his private collection. It's it's it, it's not a uh, state subsidized museum or anything like this. This is just you know a uh, a uh, yeah private collection, and 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 he has a working workplace where he makes it himself with you know some other people that like to do that. He also had there is also a, we didn't visit that, but there is a. a Quite a special uh, library of uh, of old uh, um, books uh, about cycling and uh, the history and everything. So um, it's, yeah, it's really worth when you, when you have more time to to visit again and, and to see these things as well. And look at this collection of ordinaries. It's just phenomenal. And here is the cool workshop. <laughs> Look at all these classics. This is so cool. And it's uh, so cool that we had this opportunity to to get together and, and chat today, guys. Thank you so much for doing this uh, reaction video. Um, Jordan, final, final thoughts from you in terms of you know, what this experience was like for you. Again, this is the second to the last day, November 7th. You end up flying out uh, first thing in the morning on November 9th. Take a moment to, to reflect on your day in Nijmegen. Yeah. Well, first of all, that museum, I just was incredible. I hope more people learn about it and, and, and go visit because like really blew me away. I think maybe one of my biggest takeaways out of the many was I'm thinking about the last place we toured that kind of new suburban development area and how it might look like, you know, well, this isn't particularly a walkable area overall, like we think of a lot of European places. It could have been kind of a car dependent area, but it just kind of drives home how versatile and powerful a tool the the bike is like. For us, that was nothing to get between those places. And, you know, just investing a little bit of money and time and, you know, creativity into making places accessible by bike. I think that is a lesson for us in the North American context of how, you know, we it's we're further away from having a lot of our cities and neighborhoods be, you know, quote unquote, walkable in terms of fulfilling all of our daily needs in a reasonable amount of, amount of time, but we're a lot closer to, to being bikeable places if we are, are thoughtful about that. So I think Dutch cities are such a great example because you see the spectrum of intense urban places and all the way to rural places. And, 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 uh, I don't know, I, I was inspired by it. So I appreciate Yost showing us a little bit of everything. Yeah. Yos, uh, for, for you, for the final word, um, talk a little bit about, uh, you know, the city of Nijmegen and where you guys are at right now, and then close us out by giving us an update about the International Cargo Bike Festival for this coming uh, fall. What, what every Dutch city is doing, we keep on developing and, and, and it, it's never done. And, uh, and, and the, the, the fun thing is that, uh, I mean, I have wishes and ideas that that will be uh, uh, realized within a short time. But also the city itself and the province and and, and the state they they are they they keep making things better, or at least that they think they make it better. It's not it, all, it does not always work, 
but but then they changed with you know within 10 15 years things has to have to be changed anyway so you know you keep that for 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 the next time and a lot of places that we pass by now they you know when you come within next year or in two years or three years they will be different because they are working on it right now and and i think that's uh, that that's one of the things that i uh I like a lot about uh, what's going on now in, in, in the Netherlands, not only in Nijmegen, but actually almost every town they are working on. On no, they they keep on developing these things. So even when when they do something that you don't like, you know you can change it within your own lifetime, probably. So that uh, that's a good thing. And then uh, about the Cargo Bike Festival, yeah, we will have the Cargo Bike Festival in November, 24 to 26th of November, in the the Rye in Amsterdam, which is uh, um, actually quite in the city of Amsterdam. And uh, we are preparing this with uh, with the fully charged Life Europe, and uh, this is a big show, which also about uh, electric cars, about not only cargo bikes, but all kinds of uh, electric uh, vehicles, um, also like boats, and it's also about home energy. So it's uh, um, solar panels, uh, all all kind of things like that. And our idea is to to make you know the the, the cargo bike part of of the whole of the whole life of people, not you know not only for for business or for transporting children, but but that the cargo bike is simply part of of the whole. Uh, living of of, uh, of people, and uh, it would be great if you can uh, be there again this year. I don't know if you have plans, or uh, uh, and and we can do it. Uh, we can do it over again. Well, not this year. I can't make it this yeah, year. And actually, I'm fully no. charges to coming to the United States. So okay, um, good. Fully charges coming to the United States, and again, uh, those dates are in Amsterdam, November 24th through 26th. So, folks, if you do have the ability to make it to the International Cargo Bike Festival and the fully charged Live Europe, uh, be sure to make it over there. Uh, Jordan, Yos, thank you so very much for joining me on this reaction video for our ride in Nijmegen. Thank you for uh, having me, John. <laughs> it was really fun. And uh, yeah, I, I hope we can do it again sometime. Definitely. Jordan, again, thank you. Thank you, John. Thanks, Yos. Great to see you. Hey, thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video with Yos Schleuschmans and Jordan Clark in Nijmegen. And if you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below and share it with a friend. Hey, thank you all so much for tuning in. I'll be back soon with another video. So until then, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health and happiness. Cheers. And again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, Buy Me A Coffee, YouTube Super Thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated. Thank you all so much.